Hey YouTube, Ryan's Garage here with uh, another not so quick fix. This is a uh, the wife bought this for her daycare. It's a uh, '97 uh, Ford Econoline slash club wagon, so it's got the seats and all that. And uh, I don't think it's really been maintained too well, so we decided to do a tune-up on it. Kind of had some hard starting issues here, and it's definitely a chore to get in the garage. They had to. Uh, let some air out of the tires, lube up the roof, and then promise the garage I loved it to get it in here. So it literally scraped the rubber across the top there. So today what we're what I'm gonna show you is spark plugs. Uh, removing and changing those out. I got the job done already, but I thought I'd kind of go over some things to help you guys if you are. I've uh, actually changed a, one of these V10s out in the bus, which is very similar to this. From the uh, dash back though, you know, would be your uh, bus body. But uh, the cab, everything, that's all similar. And that's definitely not a fun job. You gotta remove the intake. We had to make a special plate to stay low so you could still use the cherry picker. and. Just uh, all around not a fun vehicle to work on whatsoever. So kind of go over here and uh, show you what tools I used so that maybe you can have the similar tools or, you know, buy the tools, I guess. Uh, it's always nice to have the tools around right when you think that you're not going to need a tool anymore. That's when you need it, you know, right after you get rid of it. So, uh, light, you're going to want some good light on this. I got the uh, Milwaukee hood light and I got some of the small snap-on lights here, you know, for, for looking down in here. So, uh, let's see here. Um, what I did was I started on the passenger side and uh, in order to get access to those, uh, what I did was you'll have a 15 mil here on the bracket. A deep socket or wrench and then this you can just pull it out of the way I'm gonna actually show you two ways uh, since I'm in the area here uh, then back in here I'm not sure if you can see that but behind that connector there there is that guy uh, that'd be a 10 millimeter and that would remove your allow you to move your trans dipstick over and it's actually a 13 millimeter studded bolt underneath that and that'll allow you to move this guy right here you got a plastic uh, wiring harness protector and that'll allow you to lift that out of the way and these wires from this connector travel through that so basically you're just loosening that up so you can move that out of the way because as you can see the coils are down in there right there between the fuel injectors the uh, orange guys there so uh, once you get that accomplished uh, I found it's way easier to uh, remove the seat uh, the buses this would have been a large step in which is actually nice because it's lower and you're gonna have to sit in here to do a lot of that stuff uh, I'll show you some of the tools that I had to use. Uh, this, if you don't have it, a ratchet's fine. Uh, sockets, uh, quarter drive to get some of those brackets off. This guy here, this will help you get those uh, boots out because nine times out of ten they're going to stick down in the head there. So once you get the coil out, there's a boot underneath there, and that helps with popping those off. A uh, shorter one, you know, for back in there, you have to pop those off. Uh, this guy, to fish it out, I'll show you here in a minute with uh, the spark plugs. If you can get the boot out another nine times out of ten, it's going to break off at the bottom of that spark plug, and you won't be able to get a socket on it. Uh, I got different types of ratchets, you know. The flex head so you can get leverage in there you know in case you got to be tilted because they, uh, they were stuck in there pretty good uh, regular ratchet 
stubby ratchet this guy's nice you know fits in there that'll help you out uh, various extensions uh, I actually even needed to use the short guy because the Ford socket sits right below the uh, valve cover and if you don't got that flex head this will want to run into the valve cover right here so ratchets and sockets and all kinds of good things the uh, you're gonna want a magnet because you're gonna have to fish shit out of there when it falls down the uh, intake actually goes down into the engine there so if you drop stuff you're gonna you're gonna be up in that area which is not accessible by your finger this I bought from Cornwell. It's actually a blue power spark plug socket set. And you get all these nice sockets. You got your 916s, 5 ace, you know, 14 thin wall, 12 point, and just it's nice to have one of these if you're constantly changing or working on things. Uh, you're going to want to use this socket as much as you can because those damn spark plugs, as you can see where the sockets were, they sit down in that head pretty good. So what that allows you is when you stick that down in the hole there, the socket will kind of stabilize. Uh, it'll help prevent from, you know, if you're to pull and the socket was to go like that, you would snap the socket off. But this is actually nice because it uses the spark plug cylinder so you don't get the pull. There was a couple spots where I had to use this guy. Uh, you know, if you're careful and you can stabilize the top of the ratchet so you're not prying and pulling so much but with that swivel on there i think that kind of helps you out a little bit you know just some of those areas so that's kind of a rundown on the tools i had uh the coils are held in by a seven millimeter so i got this little guy here uh had to kind of do with these numbers uh it's a pretty pretty tricky hard job it's just a lot of reaching and a lot of feeling to where you can't see you know uh a lot of this you know this is this last coil here you're either spinning these like this you know or that so it's pretty tricky but uh you start on the one side you take the 15 the brackets off and then up in here is another 13 millimeter stud like i was telling you that has up front there so once you remove that you can pull this out of the way a little bit now you can, if you're careful, use uh, mechanical wire or zip ties to pull and hold things out of the way. Uh, this valve here and the vacuum lines, I kind of had those pulled and moved out of the way. Uh, and then just this, and I, I say it's kind of an expert job because you gotta, you know, use your hand to hold that up while you're spinning things in or pulling things. And, you know, this isn't just, you know an old chevy or ford this is pretty complex as far as spark plug changing goes so once you do that uh, you have also the option to uh, disconnect some of this you know it goes from this harness here it does go into this larger harness and uh, you can disconnect the harness at the front and kind of pull it back you know or pull it up and out of the way to help you or you can basically just try and fidget with it you know get in there get a feel for it and see how everything's you know kind of gauge yourself see how good you are at uh, being able to do things with uh, your hands and not being able to see so I mean pulling these out helps a lot because that'll that'll give you a little clearance to get in here uh, these guys I just kind of wrap my fingers and pull them and hope the rubber goes with it uh, most of, most of them stuck in the head, though. I actually had one break on me. I'll show you that here in a minute. But the rubber will stick to the spark plug. So what I do is I, I put some of this down in there, too. Uh, this will help kind of... It's not so much that it helps increase, you know, your electrical contact. It In a way, it does. I mean, it, you know, but mostly what this helps is with uh, encapsulating it, uh, so you don't get moisture and uh, stuff like that. And I kind of kind of hope that when I push that down on that spark plug, it kind of lubricates the tip of that boot there so it doesn't stick so hard the next time, you know. This is 
193,614 miles on it, so it's definitely overdue. Uh, but you know, remove those, stick your socket in there, pull your plug out. Uh, I always check your gap, even on the new spark plugs. I noticed I started saying you don't need to, but always check just to make sure. Or and uh, you know, it could have been dropped at the store or you know, bumped. And then uh, you know, careful when you're reinstalling your socket, you don't want it or your spark plug, you don't want any gunk getting in the tip of the plug there because that could uh, affect how your vehicle runs. So five cylinders on each side, V10, 6.8. Uh, removing this does help a lot. I mean, you can remove more if you want to. All I did was pop that up, you know. It's a lot of hand backwards twisting, you know, a lot of working with what you can't see. Uh, light necessary here. Um, now this side was a little trickier just because you got the piping and hoses for your uh, EGR valve and stuff like that. So this side's not too bad once you remove that uh, harness protector there. So now on this side here, and uh, I actually broke this hose clamp there. So you would you could remove that hose clamp there. Uh, the factory one was it's either going to be a seven mil or an eight mil. Uh, this one was seven, with the new one it's eight. Uh, you take that off. You got this connector here and that connector back there. You pop those off four eight millimeter bolts, and then this guy comes out, and then it's kind of a similar deal there. Great here you'd have an eight millimeter and that would get the front ready here then you would have that eight millimeter there and all i did was you know pop this guy up over to get access to this um your lines here uh, they're different sizes, so once you remove them, you don't have to worry too much about that. They can only plug into one spot. This guy pulls right out of the valve cover, and you just kind of move things around. Uh, and seven millimeters on those coils. The trickiest part is getting the coils out, you know, with that small screw, because you can't really fit your finger in tightly against it and the spark plugs so and this is what the spark plugs look like we're getting some build up on them i don't know if these have ever been changed uh, oil filler cap was shit so i replaced that uh the boots uh this guy stuck down in there and you can see we're grabbing it grabbing it with that long needle nose would rip these so if you get the plugs you might want to grab these just to save yourself the headache they actually have a spring inside of them now here's what i was talking about with this guy is this is how it ripped off in there well that's going to prevent you from getting the socket down onto here and grabbing it to spin it out and this is where a lot more of the feeling goes in is because you got to shove this down in that cylinder with it and pull that off of there and fight it out of there. So yeah, it's a pretty tricky job. Uh, you know, this kind of removing things to get access to them is the big part. Uh, you, you also really want to be careful. I know these things are kind of notorious for uh, spitting out spark plugs and that's not a fun process either of Rethreading them and putting a coil in there because you know in the vans here they, they didn't give the guy very much room to work I can't even find the kit to show you Basically, it's a large tap uh, You'd have to fight that in there and it's got a head on the end of it Which you'd have to put a socket on and drop it in there and spin it out 
sorry, I should have been a little more prepared. I thought I knew where everything was in my toolbox, but I found this. This is the punch to set the uh, helicoil in there. The cap is missing in action. So, yeah, I, you know, if you want to try and attempt this kind of a job, uh, I recommend that you have a little more experience. You know, if you have some guys that are out there, they get lucky on things like this, you know. Just not exactly a fun job. So, but the van does run a lot better, I can show you. Starts better, uh, idle smoother. It's not interfering with the computer. So if you have any questions, uh, comment on the video and I'll try and help you guys the best that I can. Oh, and just in case I'm forgetting, it's actually a 5 8 socket. I'll show you. They make them sp specifically for these engines. Uh, can maybe get you a part number. I don't know if you have... A Cornwell guy around or not, but it's 5 a CBPM 222 0x LSP. So, and these are nice, they got the magnet in there and helps you lift that socket right out. So, like I said, have any questions, message, I'll try and give you as many pointers and clues and tips as I can. Uh, I don't mind helping people at all. I know to take this in, I think they probably would have wanted four to six hundred bucks. I don't know if that's a little high or not, but not sure what they used to charge when I was doing it. But I know it's not cheap. And if they break the spark plug in there or strip it out, that's another thing is you want to don't over tighten those because you don't want to stretch those threads because that engine will pop those right out. But if they end up doing that uh, they're gonna charge you to do that you know repair that put a coil in there and like I said God only knows how much they're gonna try and get you for so thanks uh, thanks for everybody liking and subscribing to my videos I'm gonna try and get more videos on uh, not only automotive stuff uh, you know speakers I I do rebuild those when I get a spare chance Oh, got a tailgate in for Project Bronco. Show's coming apart. Uh, yeah, like, like to thank you though for liking and subscribing. Uh, thanks for watching and tune in later for more videos.